G'day guys, here we are jumping into a quick tutorial for Prism's new Bloom effect. We are going to be going a little bit in depth actually, uh, but let's take a look at it. So this is a completely new uh, Bloom effect for Prism V3, designed from the ground up for HDRP with the intention to port it over to the scriptable render pipeline version of Prism as well, but one thing at a time. Now, Prism's new Bloom is actually completely unique in its method. It does not uh, use the typical uh, kind of million pass method that many other Blooms like Unity's do. Uh, it is again in keeping with the uh, low graphics memory, low pipeline impact of uh, having as few passes as possible. And uh, yeah, why don't we just dive into it and see how it works. So. Uh, the other thing again about Prism's new Bloom is that it only has two variables uh, for the base Bloom effect. Now, other things like uh, Lens Dirt, etc. may come later, but the base Bloom effect only has these two variables and they are all that you need, which is another new thing. So Bloom Strength, let's uh, just dive into that straight away. Uh, in fact, before I do, I'll just drag in the default uh, LUTs there, default lookup texture, which is no change. So Bloom Strength, as we know, very simple. All this does is change the bloom's strength. Now, you know, you want to probably keep it around uh, one, depending on what lookup text you're using. It can go up to two in case you really, you know, want to bloom something out uh, in the inspector. But yeah, pretty self-explanatory. I think most people here know what bloom strength does. Now, bloom threshold lookup texture. This is uh, sort of one of the new innovations in Prism's Bloom is that instead of using a uh, math space threshold, I guess, for lack of a better term, or an ALU based threshold, uh, it actually uses a lookup texture in the very similar way that if you're a Prism user already, you're used to using and creating other lookup textures for Prism's uh, LUT function. And now Prism V3 comes with two specific lookup textures for Bloom uh, to start off with, maybe more in the future, but effectively these textures here are what you can use to threshold your Bloom if you so desire. So for example, if you want to put a threshold on your Bloom so that uh, let's say, uh, you know, the only the brightest parts of the scene uh, affect your Bloom, then you can just drag one of these in. So we've got a hard threshold texture in here why don't we have a look exactly what that's doing in the frame debugger. So we can see right there, this is what the hard threshold texture is doing. It is basically getting rid of anything that's not super bright in the scene. These three poles here uh, are actually very high emission, so they are super bright as well, brighter than the sky even. Uh, so effectively, you can use this lookup texture not only to threshold, but if you want to recolor your bloom in a specific scene, you can absolutely do that. If you want to, you know, enhance the contrast of your bloom, you can do that. You, you can increase the saturation of your bloom, decrease the saturation of your bloom. You can do absolutely anything that you want with your bloom uh, effectively in just that one variable. And again, they, it's the exact same lookup textures. You can use any of the other lookup textures that Prism already uses. It's a constant cost, works on, uh, well, mo mobile, uh, if you're targeting mobile HDRP as well. I'm not sure why you would, but works on mobile as well. It's a fantastic, easy way to get a threshold in. Uh, you know, if you don't particularly like, uh, you know, one very specific threshold curve, which is what most standard blooms use nowadays, you can just make your own. Easy as a lookup texture. I personally like the uh, the soft threshold texture here, as we can see, gets a little bit more of the scene in. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and uh, yeah, so we can see that in the frame debugger there, that is looking good. Now let everyone in on a bit of a secret as to another benefit of Prism's Bloom uh, compared to Unity's. So in the next step, after Prism has uh, downsampled the Bloom to half size, what it's then going to do is it's going to apply something called a median threshold or a median filter, I should say, uh, onto the bloom texture. Now what this does is it's a very wide median and that effectively means that it makes the bloom incredibly stable. Uh, 
compared to any bloom effect that does not have a threshold on it. Now, if you're familiar with Prism's older versions of, of uh, bloom, then Prism has always had this sort of median threshold and it has always helped make Prism's bloom one of the most stable bloom effects available for Unity. So as we can see there, really what you get is is very little change it's just these tiny little spots like that that is going to cause flickering once you blow it up and uh, of course the threshold gets rid of that because it is a median threshold and uh, we can go ahead and actually let's disable the frame debugger here and as we can see uh, we've got this scene set up and you know we can increase the bloom strength decrease it, all of that good stuff and uh, we've specifically chosen this scene because it's a very challenging one to render. So this is what Prism's Bloom is looking like now. In fact, I might just go ahead and hit the play button and you know run around the scene a little bit just to show that Prism Bloom is it's looking pretty pretty stable. Um, and again, we don't have temporal anti-aliasing on here, and that is a very thin uh, a very thin object there that Prism's Bloom is just handling so so well without any additional par parameters. But then, of course, I need to show you guys what it, uh, what it looks like with Unity's Bloom, just to prove uh, that I'm not telling fibs here. So this is what Unity's Bloom looks like on the same scene. Again, with no threshold, which just, I mean, this is what Unity thinks physically correct Bloom looks like, uh, aka just a Gaussian blur over the whole screen. I've got a few camera lenses, guys. I can tell you this is not how a camera lens blooms. Um, an entire scene you know it, it looks like some sort of Gaussian blur there and again this is in their physically correct materials demo scenes so this is, this is not about the materials here um, but as you can see this is what happens when a bloom does not have a median filter uh, early on uh, in early on in its uh, pipeline so Unity's bloom here let's go ahead and hit play you know see it in the same way and we can see, yeah, okay, sometimes it's fine, but you can see a little bit more shimmering than, than Prism's Bloom already. And, I mean, look at that. That is, when it gets to the thinnest part of the material, uh, you really, really see it drop off there. And, you know, look at that. It, it's like, I mean, I'm not even sure what that's like. So, if you want to avoid that, definitely... Uh, <laughs> definitely go ahead and uh, find a bloom like prisms that uses a nice median filter as well uh, so guys that is actually about it i mean that's a great thing about prisms new bloom is that it's literally got two parameters so you can you know you can increase the bloom strength decrease the bloom strength um, and the great thing about it is uh, actually you know what let's again compare things let's go ahead and turn unity's bloom on and take a look in the frame debugger uh, just to see just to uh, kind of compare so very simple uh, unity's bloom as we can see here is using 16 passes uh, and that is on medium that is not on the highest quality bloom setting uh, so if you want to spend 16 passes on Bloom that basically looks like uh, your screen's Gaussian blurred, absolutely go for it. Prism's Bloom, seven passes, excellent results. Um, and I'm very excited to get this uh, new version up on the asset store. For anyone that wants an early access version, just uh, shoot me a PM on the Unity forums. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching.